Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Online Course Creation Summit. I'm really excited about today's presentation because there are some people on the internet that you need to follow everything they do, and today's guest expert is one of those people. She has a lot of amazing advice, and our guest is Jessica Rhodes, the founder and CEO of Interview Connections. She will help you rock the podcast from both sides of the mic. So today, we're going to be talking specifically about how you can establish credibility, grow an audience, and even land clients using podcasts strategies where you appear as a guest expert. So welcome, Jessica. I'm so excited to have you. Laura, thanks so much for inviting me onto the summit. I mean, getting interviewed as a guest is such a key strategy and a lot of people have no idea where to start. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm really excited for the opportunity to do that. Awesome. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, look, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with everyone. Um, so I have a couple, you know, I have some slides. So just give me one second to share my screen and, and pop over here, move it into presentation mode. Are we still good? You can see everything? Yes, we are good. Okay, awesome. So in today's presentation, I'm going to talk about your roadmap to podcast interview um, success. So moving right along, what you're going to learn today is how to be an easy to work with guest that's really, really important. A lot of times when people start getting interviewed, um, they start to embrace their, their diva, their inner diva. And it's really important to be easy to work with, stay humble, um, because this is all about relationship building and nobody likes to be in a relationship with the diva. So we're going to talk about how to be easy to work with. Um, we're going to talk about the one question you should ask before the interview. This is really, really important. If you're going to rock the podcast as a guest expert, you need to know one key thing. So we're going to talk about what that question is. My top communication tips for podcast guests and how to get listeners to your website. So before we dive in, I want to talk, just tell you who I am. Um, as Laura mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of the premier guest booking agency for podcasters and guest experts, interviewconnections.com. We get people booked as a guest on podcasts, and we also work with podcasters to find and book guests on their show. I am a podcaster myself. I'm a content marketer. I, I do a lot of, in terms of content marketing, so my weekly show is Roads to Success. My last name, R-H-O-D-E-S. Roads to Success is a weekly show, and I cover topics about podcasting, podcast interviews. I have a weekly web TV show called Interview Connections TV. I'm blogging every week at my website, jessicaroads.biz. And then I also co-host a show called The Podcast. Podcast Producers, which is a seasonal uh, production with Corey Coates, who's the co-founder of Podfly. And that is a show all about podcasting, the art and business of podcasting. So I encourage you to check that out. And I'm a New Englander. I live in Rhode Island and I am married. I have two little kids. My son, Nathan, is um, going to be four in just a couple of months. I can't believe that. And my daughter, Lucy, is one. So now that you know who I am, we'll move right into the content. So as I mentioned before, being easy, easy to work with is so important. A couple of things you can do to be easy to work with and be a great guest, make that great first impression is number one, listen to at least one episode of the podcast that you're going to be a guest on or listen to part of a few episodes. The reason you want to do this is because you want to get to know the host's show flow. Some podcasters are going to have pre-scripted questions. Other podcasters are going to be really free flowing. Some podcasters are going to be, um, you know, really like buttoned up and stiff and others are going to be super fun. <laughs> you want to go into each show knowing how to match their personality and their energy. So that way the interview has better chemistry and the listeners find it more enjoyable to listen to. And if you listen to the show, it also gives you that opportunity to give them a genuine rating and review on the platform that you listen to podcasts. Most people listen on iTunes, but maybe it's Stitcher Radio, Google Play. After you listen to their podcast, I would recommend writing them a review. This is a way to be a giver um, to that podcaster and to help them out um, by bringing more reviews to their show. <clears throat> and number my my next secret is to ask this one question who is your target audience and what can I do to make this episode your best yet when i talk to my clients at interview connections about you know, what are you doing to rock the podcast as a guest? What are you doing on your podcast interviews to see results in your business? How are you getting listeners to your, um, to your website? They all have the serve 
first mindset. They are focusing on how to make this show good for the audience. I was just interviewing my client, Renee Brent, and she, in, in about you know four or five months, she sees um, you know book sales all over the world for her book. She's making connections. And she says, I don't care if the listener has five, da- if the podcast has five downloads or if they have 5,000, I am there to connect with anyone who is listening. And so you want to know who that podcaster's target audience is. So I would ask them either on a pre-scheduled call before the interview or in those few minutes before the interview starts, ask the host, who's your target audience? Who are you trying to reach? And how can I make this episode great? I was on a podcast with a host who um, I learned in our little pre-interview chat before the recording starts, he said that he really liked Gary Vaynerchuk. So I knew that he was going to be down with a little bit more of a feisty, no BS personality um, than somebody who was maybe like had a faith-based podcast and was really, um, you know, not into cursing (laughs) and stuff like that. So, you know, know who their target audience is, know what they like. So that way you can match that, you know, match that energy. And some podcasters say, I really like stories. I really want you to share specific examples. And and other people will say, listen, I really want to get some actionable takeaway Mm -hmm. tips. So ask that question, show that you are invested in their show's success and you're going to deliver that value. My next secret is to provide value, but don't advertise. So podcasting is a form of content marketing. Um, This is not a place where you are advertising your services and telling people what you sell. You will attract people to your community and you will attract clients by providing amazing free information. So content marketing is different from advertising. When adverti- when you are advertising, you are being really upfront about a service or a product you have to sell, and you are working to get people to buy that. When you are doing content marketing, you are attracting people to you by providing information um, to them. So one example that I gave in one of my uh, videos was that if Tide, you know, like laundry detergent, if they provide a video series on YouTube about, you know, how to clean your clothes and how to clean your house and like domestic things, that's going to attract their target audience. Their target audience is going to get great valuable information from them. And then when they need to buy their product, they're going to be most likely to buy because they are top of mind. Lowe's hardware store does this amazingly well. They are doing videos all the time with little home improvement tips. So the first thing, when I think I need a home improvement store or I need to buy a tool, I'm going to think of Lowe's because they're providing such great information and helpful videos. That's content marketing. By advertising your services on podcasts without permission, you run the risk of that host trashing your interview. And this does happen. This does happen. When you are interviewed on a podcast, there's no guarantee that it's going to go live. I hope that you don't have interviews trashed, but if you don't do a good job, if you are too pitchy, if you are talking too much about what you are selling um, and you maybe you don't have good audio or maybe you just you did something to offend the host, they might say, forget it. And that is a 30 minutes to an hour of time that you have wasted. So don't do that. Do a really good job. Don't pitch without permission and really focus on providing valuable content. So how to get clients as a guest expert. Now, the first thing that you really have to do is give a clear call to action. When you are on a podcast, you are creating evergreen content. You are creating content that people could listen to today, people could listen to next month, people could listen to in two years from now. When I first started, my my first business was called Entrepreneur Support Services. I was a virtual assistant. And I one of the things that I was doing for my clients was Pinterest marketing. I was creating infographics and I was managing people's Pinterest profiles. And I did some podcast interviews. I'm sure you can still find them on iTunes where I talked about how to you know be effective with Pinterest marketing. And I did an interview on a show called The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. Uh, a year and a half after that interview was live, I had stopped doing Pinterest marketing. I think I maybe still was doing infographics, but a year and a half later, someone says, Hey, I just listened to your interview on the real deal and I need an infographic design. Can you do that for me? I'm like, 
yes, I can. <laughs> so I, I was charging like $200 at the time um, for it. I don't even do that anymore. So if somebody found that interview today, I would be like, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. But the point is I was still doing it. People heard it a year and a half later. And, and that was a good return on my investment. I made 200 bucks from that 30 minute interview. So give a clear call to action and also make sure your action um, that you're asking people for is evergreen. That's if somebody heard it in a year from now, it would still be something that they could take action on because you never know when people are actually going to listen to your interview. Your call to action also needs to be um, easy for people. So if you are sending people to uh, a web page, you need to make sure it's mobile responsive. Now, why does it need to be mobile responsive? Most people are listening to podcasts on a mobile device. Even when I am sitting at my desk in my office, I have podcasts playing on my phone. iPhone speakers are great and it gets one less application I need to have open on my computer while I'm working. I have it on my phone. So if I leave my office and I have my podcast playing, I hear a website, I'm going to go to that on my phone. And if the website or web page is not mobile responsive, I'm going to bounce and I'm not going to go back. So whatever your website is, open it up, go to your, pick up your phone right now, <laughs> right now, pick up your phone go to your website on your phone and see if it is mobile responsive. Make sure that it is easy to and navigate through your website from a mobile device. If it is not, right after this summit is over, call, send an email to your website designer and say, hey, we need to make sure my website's mobile responsive because if I send people there from a podcast, I need them to convert. So having a clear call to action, making sure it's evergreen, and making sure that your website is mobile responsive is very, very important. Another idea that I, I have seen work really well is having a text message marketing because a lot of people are on a cell phone or an iPad when they're listening to a podcast, giving them a text call to action, like, you know, text, you know, this word to... Um, you know, like a five digit number. There's a few different companies that offer that. I've used Mobit in the past, M O B I T. And for like 40 or 50 bucks a month, you now have text message marketing where you can lead people to a landing page by way of a text message. And then you also have the ability to market to people by texting them. And so you want to think about reaching people where they are. Podcast listeners are mobile and you want to reach them through mobile platforms. So yes, you can send people to a website, but they might not be going to a website. The other thing that you have to keep in mind when you want to get clients as a guest expert and you want to convert people is having a landing page that actually converts. Sending people to a general website, a website with five different tabs and lots of different things. There's a sales page, there's content, there's blogs, there's podcasts. People are going to go there. Maybe they're going to click around and, and be interested in your content. But if you really want to get clients as a guest expert and convert people into your list, you should be sending them to a landing page that converts. So what makes a landing page converts? Well, number one, have a specific headline, a headline that gives away your deepest, darkest secrets. Lindsay Anderson is the founder of trafficandleads.com and she's known as One Click Lindsay and she does all my traffic and leads work. And so what she teaches as having a landing page that converts is having a headline that really captures people's attention. So giving away your deepest, darkest secrets is the best bet. Not like my top tips, but like something like you know, the top five secrets I've used with clients that helped them got to $50,000 in revenue from, you know, one interview, something like that, that people say, Oh my God, I have to know what that is. And as an exciting sign up button, believe it or not, just saying like register, like when people put in their name and email address, make sure that button actually has something exciting. Like on mine, it says, let's rock the podcast because I want people to feel excited when they click sign up. So not just sign up, but actually get creative with that sign up button. So it matches your branding. And it's also a little bit exciting and then spend time on copywriting. I know that copywriting does not come naturally to everyone, but you can learn it or you can hire it out. Obviously <laughs> you can pay someone to do it, but talk like write, copywriting is all about writing like you speak. So that means your grammar is not always going to be excellent when you're copywriting. This is not about writing a, a, an A plus paper in school. This is about having people read it and feel like you are talking directly to them. So really spend time on that copywriting because people, when they get to that landing page, they want to, you want to capture their attention and you want whatever you are writing on that page to be intriguing enough for them to opt in right away. And then the last thing you can do to get clients as a guest expert is to build your relationship with the host. Now, this is really important to know. Um, 
And this is another reason why you should not uh, rule out being on a new podcast. When I was meeting, I was interviewing my client, Damian Lubo. He is breaking a record with us doing 50 to 80 interviews a month. And I said, listen, if you're going to do that many interviews, you have to be open to being on new podcasts as well. And at first he was like, well, you know, I don't know if I want to be on news shows because like, is it worth my time? Do they even have an audience yet? And the important thing to know is that a podcast host, while their podcast audience may be small, and most of them probably are small, though their audience may be small, their following is not. People follow podcasters on different platforms. So there are people that I, I listen to their podcast, but there's other people that they have a podcast, but I follow them on social media. So I'm seeing what they're posting. I'm following them. I'm reading their emails, but I'm not necessarily listening to their podcast. So if a guest of one of those podcasts is has a good relationship with the host and the host starts promoting them on their email list or in social media, they're promoting what they're doing their following is going to get catch wind of these people. So just because a podcaster has a small audience doesn't mean they don't have people following them who they would refer people to. My client, Marty McDonald, landed a client that is worth $47,000 a year in his business. Really big contract. The person who signed up with him was referred to him by a podcaster. So it wasn't somebody who listened to the podcast and reached out and opted into the landing page. It was that the host of the podcast said, oh, hey, I know somebody that really needs what you have. That made, they made an introduction that way. So podcasting is not as much about publicity as it is about um, relationship building, relationship marketing, and and networking. I know people don't really like the word networking, but that's really what it is. You want to look at each podcast interview as a new connection with a podcaster, somebody that has influence. Podcasters, if they have five downloads an episode or 5,000, they're an influencer with the people who are listening to their show. So you want to take it really seriously, build a relationship with them, so they start talking about you to their following. So the one thing that you really need to have when you want to be interviewed as a guest expert is a podcast one sheet. Now, I want to talk first, before I get into the podcast one sheet, I want to give you a little bit of a foundation of what you should be having, um, what you should have as your online presence before you put together this one sheet. Podcasters want to interview people who have something to say, who have authority, and who actually have content to share. So you should be creating content on your own platform before you expect a podcaster to bring you onto their show. So having a blog, doing videos, um, doing a podcast of your own, and even if you're like, oh my God, I can't do a podcast on my own. I just want to be a guest on shows. Just turn on your iPhone, do videos, put that on YouTube, put that on Facebook, put that on your blog. Demonstrate that you are an expert and also demonstrate that you are a good verbal communicator. There are a lot of podcasters that will not book somebody on their show if they can't make sure they're a good speaker. So have some content online where people can actually hear you speak. So videos are obviously a great and easy way to do that if you don't know how to produce a podcast or you're, if you're not ready to do that yet. So first, you know, have good content on your website to position yourself and demonstrate that you are an authority. I mean, anyone can say, this is who I am and these are the topics that I'm an expert in, but having content on your website can back that up. So let's go back to the podcast one sheet. A podcast one sheet is a PDF document. It is branded. It looks pretty. It has your bio, your photo, your business logo. It has interview topics. So it actually bullet points out some main topics that you can address in an interview. And then it also has interview questions. So a few specific things that a host could actually ask you in an interview. And then you know your contact information. This gives podcasters everything they need to say yes and be prepared for an interview with you. It looks really nice. So it positions you as somebody that is an in-demand speaker or an expert. Now, the, the one sheet is a really good step in the right direction. It is the one thing that I do recommend people have when they want to get interviewed. But here's how it works. When you, get, when you are pitched to a podcaster, there's, there's an email that tells the podcaster who you are and why you're a great guest for their show. And then that one sheet is being attached to that email. They're going to look at the email. They're going to look at the one sheet. If they like what they see on the one sheet, they will go to your website. 
That is why it's important to have content on your website because the one sheet could look great, but if they get to your website and they don't see anything that backs up what you say you're an expert in, they're not going to be convinced there's enough to talk to you about. So I'll just use myself as an example. When I am when I am pitched to a podcaster, they'll see, you know, an email a little bit about me and what I talk about. They'll see my one sheet, which has, you know, the topics I could address. Then when they go to jessicarodes.biz, they're going to see hundreds of posts, blogs, podcasts, videos, where I am talking about everything I say I'm an expert in. So it backs up what I'm presenting to them. If all I said is, if all I sent them to is my sales page, sure, I could say I'm selling it, but there's no telling them what I actually know. So it's important to have a one sheet, but it has to be backed up with actual expertise and credibility. So if you are not taking time to create content and provide valuable information to people in your community, you need to start doing that immediately because before you can expect a podcaster to present you to their audience, you need to start demonstrating your expertise to your own following. And if you're thinking, oh, I don't have a following, nobody's following me. It's okay. Just talk to nobody and you will start attracting people. It's like one, uh, you know, here's a good picture for you. Let's just say, you're you're in the middle of a busy city street and you just stop and you maybe start you know singing well you have no audience people are walking by but eventually people will stop because they're going to hear you singing and they're going to say oh wow I want to watch this person so in order for you to grow an audience you have to start putting out the content first you can't say hey I'm going to sing everyone stop because they're going to say oh I don't see anything that's you know we're stopping for so put out the content you will attract an audience once you start marketing it so I want to give a gift to you today. Um, my one sheet template, I have it on my a la carte page for seven bucks. I want to give it to you for free because it's definitely something that's going to make it really easier for you to get started. So if you go to interviewconnections.com slash a la carte, my interview one sheet template is on the second line down. It's $7. Use the coupon code publicity and that'll zero out the cart. So you can get my one sheet template for guest experts for free. You can download it in to um, InDesign or Microsoft Word. So even if you are completely design illiterate, you can download this in a Microsoft Word, um, put in your topics, your questions, edit the font and the colors, put in your one, sh- put in your headshot and you are good to go. Save that as a PDF and start using that when you're pitching yourself to podcasters. So I talk really fast and I went through that pretty quickly, but we're about 20, 25 minutes in. So I'm going to, I think, stop sharing my screen and go back to Laura to see if we've got any questions. Awesome. That was so good and such a like a con- like tight but filled with information <laughs> reason. I mean, I took a page of notes while you were talking. Oh, great. <laughs> so I have a couple of questions um, mm-hmm. and a couple of things that like I've noticed that I think you can comment on too. Yeah. Um, one of the really important things that I took away from that was this idea of um, not looking at the podcast, being an expert as like your opportunity to present information, but it's kind of a little bit more about the host, right? And what you can yes. provide to their audience. I think a lot of people go, oh, well, I'm going to appear on this podcast and that's going to get me uh, so many listeners and, or, you know, followers and people are going to buy from me. And it's kind of like, you know, you, you are building this relationship with somebody. So it's not a good idea to really go into it with this concept of, oh, it's all about me and how quickly I can promote myself and pitch my services. Cause it usually, um, it doesn't resonate well with the audience or the person who's hosting. So yeah, the best thing you can do is make the host look good. Be a giver, really focus on how can I make this interview the best episode of their podcast? And you might go into a show saying, oh, I don't know if this is the best for me. I don't know if this is my target audience. Be a giver because that will come back to you. You know, I've been in business um, almost four years now and there are people that started following me two years ago and just reached out and said, I've been following you for years. I'm ready now. Buyers buy when they're ready to buy, you know? So you want to get in front of even people that might not seem like your ideal target audience today. You want to get exposure to as many people as you can. And that means being a giver and just providing the most value to any audience you find yourself in front of. 
Yeah. And it's, a, it has so many other benefits that you might not even realize when you're doing the interview. I know for me, I just launched my own podcast mm-hmm. and I was shocked, you know, before I even told my list that the podcast was launched, when we went into the back end to, you know, add some new episodes, there had already been almost a hundred downloads of the launch episodes. And I think that was because people were Googling my name where I had appeared on someone else's podcast and they yeah. were finding me. So you never know. I mean, that might not be, it might not become a client today, but it's so true that that is how people hear of you and might start following you. And it can just, you know, it's like this ripple effect that sort of spreads out um, and can touch you so many years later. Yeah. And you make a really good point about the links. When you are a guest expert on podcasts, most of the time you are going to have a backlink to your website in that podcaster's show notes page. And the more backlinks to your website that you have online, the higher up in the search results you will be. So I am not the only agency that books podcast interviews, but I've been around the longest, and and at least in my niche, and I've got so many links to my websites from the podcast that I've been on um, and the links, like articles that people have linked to my site that when people search getting on podcasts, interview connections is going to be the top result because I have so many links back to my website. So that is one big reason people do podcast interviews is to get backlinks. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool because I think as a strategy, it's, it's got so much potential, right? Like, I mean, it, if you do it right, it only makes you look good and helps you grow yeah. your own following and your credibility. Um, but you're also networking with people. You're getting these backlinks. I mean, it just, it, it's so neat to see the many ways that being a guest expert on someone else's podcast can pay off. So yes. I want to touch a little bit on something that um, I did not know about before I started being a guest expert that I think people need to, to realize, which is this idea of podcasting being a long-term strategy and mm-hmm. the idea of like, if you're interviewed on someone's podcast today, um, don't expect that that's going to be live like next week. Um, so can right. you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, you, um, I'll help you set some clear expectations around the timeline because it really is taking a long time and more. And today, as opposed to two years ago, um, podcasters have a much like lengthier production schedule. So an interview that is recorded today might not even be live for six to eight weeks. Um, or you might schedule an interview today and then you don't record it for another month. And then it's not another month after that before it's even live. And then it's even longer before everyone actually hears the episode. So if I launch an episode, like my podcast roads to success, I launched them on Wednesdays. If I look at my downloads, um, one day after I launched the episode, there's maybe like 50 downloads, you know? But then if I go back a month later, there's a couple hundred. So it takes time. Like people listen on their own time. They don't, not everyone is downloading your show the minute you produce and the minute you publish it. Um, So it takes a long time for everyone to hear it. And then when I look at, so my show is like two to 300 downloads a month after I publish an episode, but then if I look at episodes that I released two years ago, they've got like 800 downloads. Mm -hmm. So like people like find it over time and it just takes a long time for the right people to find it too. And usually you really only need like one person to take action. Mm -hmm. So depending on what you have. So the other thing that's really important to know is like, what is, what do you actually have in your business that is valuable? Like if the only thing you have is a $5 ebook, like you might, you're probably not going to see like the biggest ROI, but we have clients that if they get one person to purchase their $4,000, you know, marketing package, that's fantastic. You know, so usually it just takes one or two people to take action. Um, you know, our client Dave Sanderson took, you know, he said six to nine months of four interviews a month before he saw anything um, happen. But now he's getting four and five figure paid speaking gigs from the connections he's making on podcasts. But it took a while to start. And the other th- the reason is that like, you're not that good when you first start out. Like a lot of people think, well, I'm great, you know, and you might be successful in your own right, but it actually takes a lot of practice before you hone the craft of being a good guest and providing good value, being conversational, having a good first impression with people, not using ums and ahs. Like, all that takes practice. So your first couple of interviews just aren't going to be a home run. And that gets back to this idea of making sure that you're driving the the traffic to something that's evergreen, right? Because like yes. if, I, if I'm appearing on a podcast and I'm talking about, oh, my course is launching next month, the episode probably is 
all is not going to be live until maybe after that's happened anyways. Yeah. And if I'm pulling that course down later or something, I mean, I don't want people to be going to a dead link. So you have to think about this idea of it being a long-term strategy, because I don't know about you, but I mean, I treat it like Netflix, you know, like I have my overcast yes. app and when I'm driving somewhere, when I'm going out on a walk, I'm, I'm sometimes going back two or three years into somebody's podcast until I see something interesting. And then I kind of binge listen to it. So like you said, you never know when people are going to stumble upon your message. You want it to still be relevant and you want it to still be valuable. So maybe yeah. that's why I like to think of podcasting, you know, whether you're hosting or whether you're being a guest expert as being this long-term strategy rather than like, oh, I can just add a couple people quickly to my list or become my yeah. own. It doesn't often work like that. So there's exactly. one there's one more question I have um, uh -huh. for you and I I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but I want to mm. hear <laughs> your perspective. Sure. A, a lot of people, when they get started with this idea of being a guest expert, they're like, Oh, I want to be featured on entrepreneur on fire, or I want to be featured on like, you know, these huge podcasts that have so many downloads is, is there, I mean, I know you talked about the benefit of appearing on newer podcasts as well. Um, so is it wrong to go after these bigger podcasts? Um, should you get some interviews first with some other people that you can point to as examples or yeah. how would you recommend approaching that? So there's a couple different things to, to think about. Number one, if you have not been interviewed on a lot of podcasts, don't go on Oprah your first time. Like you are, you need, like I said, to be a great guest and to rock your interview and really have a home run, you know, I hate to call it a performance, but really like to be a good speaker and to be a great guest, it takes practice. Just because you are successful in your own business and you know what you're talking about doesn't mean you're actually a good guest or a good speaker. So before going on the main stage of the biggest show, go on the smaller podcast so you can at least kind of improve your communication skills. The other thing to think about is you want to be going on shows where you have the highest density of ideal listeners, like potential clients. So that may or may not be on those big podcasts. There's a lot of vanity and ego that comes from being on a huge show. That doesn't mean there's a lot of your ideal target market. Um, I know a, a friend of mine, actually told me that she was on a very large podcast, one you probably have heard of, um, to secure her interview on that show. She purchased about $700 worth of the host's product. I uh, was really excited about it. She, she really um, felt confident about that investment because it's a huge audience, really big show. She worked on her answer. She prepared her answer. She's like, that, I just, it was a home run nothing from it in her business, nothing. Um, I'm sure she got some tweets and emails from listeners, but zero sales in her business as a result of that. Just because it's a big show does not mean it's going to bring you a financial return on your investment. So don't get caught up in the hype of being on a big podcast. Focus on being on shows where you're going to make good connections with the hosts. Where you're going to be in front of the highest density of, of target clients. So if it's a hundred downloads an episode, but every single listener is super focused on your expertise and what you talk about, that's going to be better than 10,000 of a more general audience. I love that idea of looking at the the density of the, the listeners that you're looking for, mm -hmm. as well as the relationship with the host, because I, I, there is this, you know, ego and vanity of like, well, that would be, you know, my dream would be to be mm -hmm. interviewed on that podcast. And that's great. You know, you can yeah. still have it, but it, that doesn't always mean it's going to be your most successful podcast appearance or that right. it's actually going to translate to even $1 in your business. So mm -hmm. really important um, to keep in mind. And I strongly recommend for everybody to go and listen to Jessica's podcast. I've been <laughs> to listen to <laughs> episodes this week already. Um, oh, that's awesome to hear. <laughs> Thank so you. I recommend that. Go ahead and grab that special deal on her one sheet template because the one sheet does make a big difference when you're pitching yourself to be a guest expert on podcast. And thank you so much for being willing to uh, appear and share all of your expertise. Thank you so much, Laura.